Welcome to my channel where I try to break down accounting and tax topics to help small business owners, taxpayers, or anyone else who's just genuinely curious. I'm a little under the weather, but the show must go on. A simple well-meaning change has caused a lot of people to get burned. The change that I'm talking about is the new W-4 employee withholding form. A W-4 basically lets your employer know how much tax to withhold from your paycheck. So if you like bigger refunds, you would have them withhold more money. And if you don't like giving the government interest-free loans, you would have them take less out. Over the past two years, I've seen countless people get the dreaded tax surprise when filing their taxes because of their withholdings weren't correct. And it's not just people who started new jobs. For some reason, a lot of folks are struggling with the new form and it's causing unexpected surprises at tax time. Prior to this change, every person in your household would receive a personal exemption. You would multiply the number of individuals in your household by the amount for that year. For instance, in 2017, if you had a married couple with one child and you would take the personal exemption amount of $4,050 multiplied by three for a total personal exemption of $12,150. You would then take that amount and add it to the standard deduction for the year, 12,600, and then their total deduction would be $24,750 if they didn't itemize. Fast forward to 20. 2021 and the calculation is much simpler. There are no longer personal exemptions as the standard deduction was increased across the board. A family of three and a family of five would have the same standard deduction of $25,100 for 2021. Now the family of five would likely get additional child tax credits, but the standard deduction would be the same for both. So the new change, and I put that in quotes because it's been out for a few years now, can impact families differently. If you have a large family, you'd have been better off exemption wise under the prior tax law. But if you're single or have a smaller family, you're likely better off under the new tax law. However, in the U.S., we operate under a marginal tax rate system, meaning dollars earned at higher levels are taxed at their corresponding rates, and the overall new tax law lowered marginal rates for most categories, so the overall tax bill likely decreased for both taxpayers. Now, what's the problem with the W-4 now? Well, the old W-4 was easier to manipulate, and not in a bad way. How much money was withheld from your check? If you had a family of three, you could file your W-4 with three exemptions and have the least amount taken out of your check. If you wanted a bigger refund, you would claim two, one, or zero zero exemptions to have more taxes taken out. So now let's go step by step to cover how to fill out the new W-4. In step one, you're going to enter the personal exemption, including your name, social, address, etc. Then you would enter your anticipated filing status, remembering that single withholds the most money, Maryland filing jointly hold withholds the lease, and head of household is somewhere in the middle. So if you're married, you are not required to select married filing jointly. This only relates to withholding rates, not whether you're legally married or single. So you would select single if you wanted more taxes taken out to potentially get a bigger refund at tax time. Step two, so you would use this step if one, you had more than one job at the same time, or two, you're married filing jointly and you and your spouse both work. Option A most accurately calculates the tax you would need to have withheld. It's basically a calculator on the IRS website where you would answer questions specific to your job, adjustments, tax credits, etc., to get a specific dollar amount tailored to your situation. While option B is a little less accurate, you would need to go to pages three and four to come up with the additional withholding. For example, if you had two jobs and one is higher paying than the other, you would need to withhold more more money on a lower paying job or it would not be taxed enough. So you would go to page four and you would locate the table for your filing status and then cross reference the higher paying job and the lower paying job to get an amount that needs to be withheld. If you make $60,000 at your higher paying job and $10,000 at your lower paying job, you would want $2,220 withheld from the lower paying job. If you didn't tell your second job to withhold that amount, they would likely not take as much in taxes because they would assume that you're in a lower tax bracket. They don't have any way of adding in what you made at your other job. You would enter $2,220 on page three, line one, and then you would move to line three and you would enter the pay periods for the year. If you're gonna work the entire year and you're paid bi-weekly, you would enter 26 on line three. And then you would divide line one by line three to get the total additional withholding on your lower paying job, which would add up to about $86 per pay period. This amount would be entered in step four, line C as extra withholding. This basically forces your second job to withhold the correct amount and save you from getting a surprise at tax time. The calculation is similar. If you had three jobs, you would just follow the same steps on page three, line two, just like we did for having two jobs. If you and your spouse have only two jobs, you can instead check the box in option C instead of doing what we did in option B. The box must also be checked on the other W-4 for your other job as well. So both W-4s for both jobs would have the box checked in option C. 
if the box was checked, the standard deduction and tax brackets would be cut in half for each job to calculate the withholding. In other words, instead of giving you the full tax break, it cuts it in half so that you have more taxes taken out to cover the money that you're making. Now, this option should only be used if the pay for both jobs is similar. Otherwise, it can cause problems as well. Step three. This step provides instructions for determining the amount of child tax credit and credit for other dependents that you may be able to claim when you file your tax return. Now, this is where people start to get in a lot of trouble if they don't know what they're doing. If you like getting refunds or you don't want surprises at year end, you should probably not take credits for dependents during the year. If you claim credits here, your tax liability will be reduced and you'll get more money throughout the year, which is fine if that's what you want. However, if you want a bigger refund, you would not want to claim all your dependents here. So I would enter zero for both of these. Step four is for optional and or other adjustments. 4A, enter the total of your other estimated income for the year if you have any. So you don't include any jobs or self-employment. This would be for things like interest, dividend, retirement income, etc. 4B, enter the amount from the deductions worksheet, which is on line five, page three, if you expect to claim deductions other than the standard deduction on your 2022 tax return, and you want to reduce your withholding to account for those deductions. Again, going this route will reduce your taxes throughout the year and make your refund potentially lower at the end of the year. 4C, enter any additional tax you want withheld from your paycheck each pay period, including the amount that we calculated for having multiple jobs in step two. We previously calculated roughly $86 because our higher paying job put us in a higher tax bracket, but you could also round that number up to 100, 125, etc. if you think you may get a pay raise or if you just want a bigger refund. In step five, you would sign and date and then the only thing left to do would be to give it to your employer. I can't stress how important a W-4 is. This tax season, I've seen more people specifically get burned than I have previously seen because employers are not interpreting the forms correctly. And it's not even people who have changed jobs. I've seen clients with the same job get hammered this year as well. So to avoid a surprise, I highly recommend submitting a new form or if you're happy with where your tax return is last year, keep an eye out on any percentage changes from your federal withholding. Just look at your check stub and divide your withholdings and earnings and monitor throughout the year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video video.